So I'd never done RVing before, so I was pretty nervous about what was involved with every time we moved. Packing the coach up, moving, setting up again. And I, and I had uh, I'd had some before, but uh, still had never had a coach like this, and I hadn't had it as a full lifestyle. So it was a little learning curve for me too. So I thought it might be useful for us to show you guys what is involved in our teardown when we're on a move day. Okay. So. I get to do the pink jobs. Yep. And I usually do the blue jobs, which is most of the stuff outside. So, so let's get started. All right. Okay, so outside here, we were you know, here for a couple weeks, so we had a lot of things out. We have our rug, have our night lights, we have our table that we cook on when we're cooking outside. We've got the barbecue around the back corner, the bike table, and, the, and some chairs for enjoying an evening out. So, being moved day, it's time to put it all away. Now let's take off the wheel covers, put away the grill, and put away the bikes. Everything has its place. Okay, there you go. Always sure to check the tire pressure before we go on any trip. You know, it might be different for different recreational vehicles, but usually they have high pressure, so you need a proper tool for that. Yep, right where I want it. A lot of wheels to check. This one's all right, but the one on the other side was a little low, so it looks like I gotta pump one of the tires up before we go, but it's always good to check. Okay, so it's time to pack down the inside of the coach to get it ready for the road. Let's go. So I've already cleaned the coach, vacuumed, swiffed the floors. Now it's just putting everything away so nothing moves around while we're driving down the road. So I always like to start at the back, then here in the bedroom, and then make my way forward. So here in the bedroom, got a rug on the floor that just fits nicely here. I always make sure all of the cupboard drawers and the cupboard doors are closed. I'm going to put the loose items down. These hooks, I have to take the jackets and rope off the hooks because this slide comes in and I don't want any risk of them getting caught and stuck in the slide. Put the photo frame and the candle away. I like to put the end of the duvet cover up because when the slide comes in it butts right up against the back of the bed so I don't want this to get caught or damaged in any way. Okay and we've got a couple of pocket doors here so they need to be locked so they don't bang into anything going down the road. Now another rug, pop this over here and the bedroom's done. This is Mike's office, he'll get to that in a minute. So the bathroom's pretty easy. I just put the hand towel in the sink, put these couple of items in the sink. I'll put this in the cabinet just in case it leaks. Make sure they're all closed. 
this are closed. You take this down so it doesn't move around while we're driving. And the last thing, in the shower, just like to take a little squeegee down because it usually falls off. So we'll get in ahead, make sure that's locked and the bathroom's good to go. Now time for the kitchen and living area. So with the kitchen, I just have these bowls of veggies. I am able to pop in the sink so they don't move around. The sink's usually empty, but I've got a couple of cups in here today. That'll be fine. This is really handy because when I'm using them, I can just push it forward and push it back again. And I found that they don't move when we're traveling if I put some of these underneath them just to keep the tray in place. So, do that. I've already emptied my kettle out of water, so there's no water in that. Lay this down. And that is very unlikely to go anywhere while we're driving. Next, my little hair ties. These are really handy for these cupboards because the slide comes in here. And you really want to make sure that these don't pop open while the slide is in. That has happened once when we forgot to put these on and one of the cupboards did pop out. Fortunately, we managed to save it, but Things that move around inside can fall forward and pop your cupboards open. So it's always a great idea to put a, an elastic around your cupboard doors to keep that safe. Put these away. Over here, this little space heater we use if the mornings or the evenings get cool. Super handy. We just lay it down under the dinette. And the same goes for this. This is a great little hardy spot to put any little moving parts around and away. Putting a water purifier. And that tea towel just helps prevent that from leaking. You know, just lowering the vents. Got one in the kitchen and one in the bathroom. better for aerodynamics. We've got a second pocket door here that separates Mark's office off from the living space. Just lock that in place and give the refrigerator and freezer door a push. Just click to make sure they're fully closed and the kitchen's in pretty good shape. So now we need to put this ottoman away so it doesn't move. stop the pillows from flying off. Not that they're going to cause any damage. And now this gets locked into place down here. Last thing. That's not going anywhere. Just Make sure it's straight so it doesn't hit the slide when this slide comes in. Okay, so this is my little office workspace with the executive view. And I like to put quite a few things out so it feels really homey for me, which brings us a little bit more to put away, but it's worth it. Just put this under here. I've got a little cupboard just above here. It is really handy to just put my things away. All of my books. In here. You probably don't need to stand on the chair to reach these things, but I do. So this is a desktop Mac, but it's really easy to transport in this iLugger case, which are designed and built specifically for Macs. And they have them in all different sizes depending on your display. So love this. It's not cheap, but it's worth it. 
So this has already been shut down. So it's just as easy to pop in it in like that. There's a nice foam, thick foam area there to protect the screen. The little pockets for the keyboard, the mouse, and the power. So this all fits really nicely and neatly. It's really great design. You can even take this on airplanes with you. So this fits nicely under here as well. You can fit so much stuff under here. Super handy. So that's safe. This is an awesome little stand Mark built for my monitor and that can just go under the table as well. Now it's time for Mark to pack down his office. Okay, so this is what I do to keep my computer equipment safe when we're traveling. Um, what I usually have to do first, I'll get my footrest out of the way, and I grab my chair, and since it's on rollers, this would fall off easy. I have to tip this on its side, and then the footrest just tucks in nice and neat right underneath it. Stays nice and steady. Then I bring my laptop down. I'd already powered it off and shut it down for the day. I just leave my laptop case underneath there all the time. And then don't forget your uh, mouse or keyboard. Those are easy to forget. Once I put those in, Laptop just drops down there. Keyboard, drop the cord. This slides under here as well. Because with the carpet, it doesn't move much. It's light. This um, keyboard tray can just go underneath the laptop. That'll hold it still. And all I've got left is the monitor. And once I unplug that, I don't want this loose cord, so because I don't want that sliding off anywhere, so I just roll it up, tuck it in my little bin up top. So these are the cords that plug in the laptop and the monitor, and I just have those plugged into a power strip underneath the desk. So if I just turn off the power to that power strip, then I just grab the monitor and I bring it down, set it on that pillow with the screen against the cushion so that keeps it safe and then I have an extra pillow that I just tuck behind the monitor in between the arm of the chair and that keeps it in place really nice uh, one thing when we stay a little bit longer we tend to turn these front driving seats around just to make the space more homey but all you gotta do to get ready to leave is to just turn that back around Oops. They're a little tricky. And every, every coach is going to have a slightly different way to make that happen. But that's how ours works. And that's part of getting it out of the way so that there's not when the slide's coming in. So. And now we're going to just dump the tanks and unhook the water and electric and we'll be ready to go. Okay. So first things first, unhook the fresh water. So just turn it off. A water pressure regulator. Make sure you don't get too much pressure in the coach. And this is just a 90 degree angle with a quick release that I use to be able to make sure I can hook up the hose while the door is still shut. So I turned off the water and I'm unhooking the fresh tank and I just let the water run out of it as I ravel it up. And I like to screw the ends together. It keeps it nice and tidy in the coach and it keeps it more sanitary as well.
Always drain the black tank first. In our particular coach, we have a tank flush. Um, so when I'm unhooking, after I undo the fresh tank, and when I'm dumping the black tanks, I also use this to flush out the tanks. And also notice I also have a backflow regulators. This little brass piece here prevents any water potentially from going back the other direction. So you just put this on first and that protects the ability from water going that way. And hook on your hose and note this is a separate hose than what I use for my fresh tank. This, don't ever use the same hoses for fresh and for any flush. And then this says tank flush. And then you just pull your black tank, let that get all drained out. And don't ever turn on the hose for this until after that's open and drained out. Once that's drained down, then you can turn on the water pressure and do the tank flush and let it run for a couple minutes to make sure everything's running clear. Alright, you can hear it on the video, but we're running the tank flush right now. And basically a tank flush, not every recreational vehicle has this, but um, we have it. And basically it's just a sprinkler system inside the black tank to help make sure everything gets cleared out really well when you're at a full hookup or at a dump station. So you just let that run for a couple minutes. Gray tank. Always pull the black tank before the gray tank. That gives the gray water a chance to flush everything out of the hose. Okay, so just giving the coach a once over here and make sure everything that needs to be put away is put away. Um, we do have a checklist that we follow, but we didn't show that to you in that video. But uh, we'll have that in the blog post that goes with this. Just doing a quick walkthrough. Everything's neat, tidy, put away. And it's time to start up the engine and pull the slides in. Start her up first. And we'll bring in the driver's side, which is the big one over here. Just always keep an eye on it as you're pulling the slide in. Make sure there's nothing in the way because it is easy to forget, believe it or not. So we'll go on smoothly. You see how much smaller it gets when the slides come in. Just goes to show one of the great things about how slides make coaches any RV so much more livable. We just get so much more width and space. And now we're bringing this driver's side. We've got two slides in our bedroom. You can always like to watch it as I'm doing it. Last one. This marks offices on this slide as well. Done. Okay, lights off. Now 
now it's time to bring up the leveling jacks which we always do after we have brought the slides in because it's really important that the coach is as level as possible while you're bringing your slides in if you are not level you may have trouble bringing your slides in but anyway this is really easy on our particular coach there's a button here that says auto store just press the button and you can't feel it but we can feel it moving okay so We've got three of the four lights off now. We're just waiting for this last one and then it'll tell us when we're ready to go. Love all this new technology. It's awesome. When it works. And here we go. Green lights come on. We're in travel mode. And that's the thumbs up. We're ready to roll. And don't forget to bring up your day shade so you can see while you're driving. So you can see our front day shade there, the black one, and it's just as easy as pressing a button. Easy as that. Last couple things we'll do outside. Turn up the power. And make sure you lock up all the bays. So we're done. So that took me about 20 to 30 minutes to do the inside. And, yeah, and it probably took me about 30 minutes to do the outside too. And it just depends on how set up we are outside. But usually about a half hour. Yeah, and it's obviously going to depend on your particular RV, your situation, how much loose stuff you have to put away, how many things. But uh, it's not anywhere near as much as I thought it might have been before we started out on this adventure. I agree. It's pretty, pretty easy. It's not a big deal. And, uh, you know, again, you know, it depends on your coach on whether it'll be as easy or more complicated. But it's nothing to be worried about, that's for sure. So now we're done. Yeah. And it's time to hit the road. So yeah, let's go. See you later.